Hello and welcome to this first video on first order system responses. In our previous videos, we have talked about the transfer function of a system and we define the transfer function like this. We call it G uh, in the S domain, G of S, and it being equal to the Laplace transform of the output divided by the Laplace transform of the input. And we've also used this method to determine the transfer functions of various systems. We're going to be reliant on work that we've already done in previous videos. So if you haven't watched our videos where we derive transfer functions, it's worth doing so. We've also, in a previous video, talked about different input types and how they can be expressed in the S domain because we rearrange this equation here to say something like this. The Laplace transform of the input multiplied by the transfer function must be equal to the Laplace transform of the output. In other words, if we know what the input is and we know the transfer function of our system, then multiplying these together, we work out the response or the output of that system. And so we've looked at a range of input types in our previous video. And we've also calculated various transfer functions as well. In this video then, and the videos that follow, we're going to put both of these into practice. We're gonna look at several examples um, of systems where we are going to derive the response or the output of that system based on the input that we supply. And so this first example in this video is an RC circuit, a resistor and a capacitor connected in series. For this circuit, we've already derived an equation for the transfer function in a previous video, and we found it to be um, this equation here, G of S, the transfer function, is equal to 1 over SRC plus 1. So let's suppose for this example we supply a step voltage of 5 volts at time equals 0. If you're not familiar with what I mean by step voltages, that kind of thing, it's worth looking at our previous video where we talked about the different input types. And so here we're going to apply a step voltage of 5 volts at time 0. Now I just want to make a, a side note here because in our previous video we defined the step function in the S domain as being something like this. A over S multiplied by e to the power minus ST. But T in this particular formulation is the time delay before that step takes place. Well. In this example, the step takes place at time zero. It, it happens immediately. And so t is zero. And if t is zero, then really we're raising um, the exponential here. We're, we have um, to the power zero or minus zero s. And anything to the power zero is one. And so we're reducing this immediately down to just a over s. And so that's worth bearing in mind. If you ever have a step function that takes place at time zero seconds, we can simplify that formulation just a little bit here. Um, if you revisit the table of Laplace transform, you'll see actually that a, a constant a um, becomes a over s when it's transformed. And so you can see that a step function at time t equals zero is equivalent to a constant, which is, is kind of what we're, we're doing really. We're just, we're saying that it's immediately at that value from time equals zero. As we discussed previously as well in a different video, a, the a term here, was the size of the step input. And in our case, the size of the step input is, is five or five volts. And so our formulation for the input, we're gonna write like this. It's vi of s, the input voltage, and it's equal to not a over s, but now five over s in the s domain. As we said at the beginning, we can determine the system response by multiplying the input in the S domain by the transfer function, which is also in the S domain. And so we see something like this. This same equation was written sort of in words at the start, but here it is again um, expressed in terms of VO, the output um, voltage in the S domain, must be equal to the input voltage in the S domain multiplied by the transfer function. And so let's put these two things together now. We have um, 5 over s is what we said was our input when we reduced it down, multiplied by that transfer function which we derived in a previous video 
uh, 1 over SRC plus 1. And if we multiply these together, multiplying the top and the bottom uh, rows, we get 5 over S multiplied by brackets SRC plus 1. So now we've determined the system response or the output of this system in the S domain. The last step is to convert this back into the time domain. And to do this, we review the table of Laplace transforms here to find an expression that most closely represents the system response here. Um, again, if you're not familiar with inverse Laplace transforms, we have some introductory videos on that topic. I'm not gonna go into too much technical detail. Um, I'm assuming that you've, you've seen those videos or are familiar with Laplace transforms already, but if not, um, those videos are there to refresh your memory. But if we review the table of Laplace transforms here, we see that the closest entry in the table that corresponds with our output function that we've derived here is an entry that looks like this one here for exponential growth. And we see that the exponential growth formula um, in the table here in the S domain, it's A over S brackets S plus A. The inverse transform of that would take us back to something that looks like this, one minus a to the power minus a t. Now, our system response doesn't quite correspond with the function in the table, and we're gonna to have to make a few adjustments. So firstly, if you look at this coefficient of five as a numerator of our fraction here, we've got five on the top, um, we're allowed to take this outside of the fraction instead. And so what I'm gonna do is something that looks like this. We've got now v o of s, rather than 5 over, I've got 5 off to the side here, multiplied by 1 over S brackets SRC plus 1. Now the reason I've done this is because when I'm looking at the entry in the table here, I can see that these two A values are obviously consistent. They're both A, uh, A on the top here and S plus A on the bottom. Now in our formulation here, we have 5 on the top, we have plus 1 in the bracket there. So those don't match. I want these to be consistent. And so the easiest way to do that is just to cheat a little bit and take that five outside of the fraction that we're gonna perform the inverse transform on. And now we've got one on the top and one in the bracket there. We're being a bit more consistent. Now, one is not the final result um, for these this value of A. We're gonna do a, a couple more things here because if you look back at the entry in the table, you can see that the S term in the bracket here has no coefficient. It's S plus A, it's not 2S plus A or anything S plus A. And we have a bit of a problem here because in our function, the S in our bracket is multiplied by RC. Now, the solution here is to divide all the terms in our function, top and bottom, by RC. And so we're gonna get something that looks like this. I've divided um, by RC and so now I've just have S here but that one had to be divided by RC, and the same on the top, the one had to be divided by RC as well. And so this result looks a little bit messy, but now let's compare this to, to the, the function in the table here, because we see that what we call A in the table corresponds with what we have as one over RC. Not forgetting that our function's been multiplied by five, but we took that outside of the fraction. Um, our result when we apply the inverse Laplace transform um, to convert this back into the time domain, let's use the um, Laplace transform notation there. We're gonna apply the inverse Laplace transform just to that, um, that, that fraction only, the, the five being a constant we can leave outside um, the, the, the inverse transform here. And so when we perform that inverse transform, we're gonna see something that looks like this. And the reason being, we had in our table here, one minus e to the power minus a t. Well, a we've said is one over rc, or equivalent to when we, when we compare the two entries with um, uh, the entry in the table with the entry that we have. Um, and then t is our um, variable here. And so simplifying that, we could say minus one over t uh, sorry, minus one over RC times T, but we could simplify that a little bit into the form of E to the power minus T over RC. 
So this is our system response in the time domain, which completes this example. So let's just for illustration's sake, let's suppose that this resistor had a value of uh, 1,800 ohms or 1.8 kilo ohms. And the capacitor had a value of 470 microfarads. We can now calculate the output voltage over time and we see the following response, something that looks like this. Now, what we see here is to be expected, really, if we're familiar with our previous studies or with capacitors, it's the growth curve characteristic that we see when a capacitor charges. So we see that the output voltage increases quite rapidly at first and then it levels off as the output voltage approaches the step input height of 5 volts or the supply voltage. It approaches um, that supply voltage. So this is the case for a step input, um, but won't be the case for other input types. The advantage of having found the transfer function, uh, derived that in a previous video, is that we can easily determine the different system responses that would occur for different input types that apply um, using the same method. And one other thing to mention here is that if you've come across the, the growth function for a capacitor before, you might have seen the growth curve equation um, for a circuit like this expressed in this form where the, the output voltage in the time domain is equal to the supply voltage multiplied by in brackets one minus e to the power minus t over tau. And so it's a good reminder when we compare these two that um, tau is, is something that, um, a, a letter that we give for what we call the time constant in an RC circuit. And this is a good derivation of why tau equals RC, or R times C, for a series RC circuit. So I hope you found this first example useful on deriving the response for an RC circuit, just using the same principles of the transfer function and the input types that we've studied in previous videos. In the following videos, we're going to go through more examples as well.